Welcome back, Martin here. Today we're excited to announce the Flashcard Home, a new central place for organizing your study documents and flashcards. There's a ton to go over here, so this will be a quick feature-focused video. For a more workflow-focused video, check out the other one we've linked at the end. The Flashcard Home shows every document in your account that contains a flashcard. Here you can see that it's showing all of my documents for classes, exams I'm focused on, books, my midterm, and more. You can see that documents are organized by new priorities. They can either be in the active state, maintaining, paused, or no priority. If I create a new document, which I can do from the bottom left button, and then give it a title, and then give it a flashcard, you can see that it will automatically be added to your flashcards home in the no priority state. If I go back to this document, we also now see that there's a new practice button in the top right. I can click on this to jump into practicing any flashcards in this document. Additionally, I can change the document's priority here. Cards in the active state will appear at the front of your global queue, which can be accessed on the flashcards home from this button here. The active state is supposed to represent classes you're currently in, books you're currently reading, or learning projects you're currently focused on, things that you're actively trying to develop your understanding of. Then the maintaining state appears after all cards in the active state. The maintaining state is for cards that you want to be able to pull to mind when you're thinking, but that you're not actively learning more ideas about. Cards that are in documents that are in the pause state will not appear at all. These are for ideas that you don't want to currently be spending any time practicing. Additionally, you can now practice in a variety of ways. First, you can practice with space repetition, which will only show cards when they're ready to be tested according to the space repetition algorithm. If you want to practice all of the cards in a given document, you can do so with practice all. This will ignore the space repetition status and show you them all. Then the practice all in order button shows them in the order that they are in the document. To get an overview over all documents that have cards that are scheduled to be practiced, you can go to the flashcards home. You can see that every document has the number of cards that are due today and a quick practice button so that you can jump right into studying. If you want to focus your practice at a more fine-grained level, you can toggle open any desktop document here to see its subdocuments. I can expand this to my classes or even individual topics or individual lectures. You can, of course, nest these as much as you want. To create a nested document in RemNote, all you need to do is press the plus button on the sidebar here. A new nested document will automatically be created, and I can keep on nesting this infinitely. At the top of the home, you can see a list of any documents that you've recently practiced. We found this to be really convenient to jumping into classes you're currently focused on, learning projects you're currently in, and making sure that you're prioritizing those first. On each of the documents, you can also see an overview of your level of mastery of the cards that are in that document. Here, you can see that 23% of the cards in my first semester classes are cards I've started to learn, 17% of them are new, and the rest of them are stale. As you continue to practice, you'll see this green bar fill up all the way first in light green and then dark green, which I think has been pretty motivating to start to recognize how your mastery is growing over time. We're also introducing two of these additional mastery states here. The new card state represents any cards that you haven't practiced at all. Here, we'll limit it such that only 30 of these cards will appear in your queue each day, so that if you import a lot of cards or just write a bunch in a single go, your main queue will not be overwhelmed with all of the new cards there so that you can continue developing your mastery of the prior ones. The stale state is similar. In this case, we, these were added a few days ago or a week ago, and they're now stale, meaning they're significantly behind their scheduled practice time. Here, you again don't want to overwhelm your practice with these stale cards, so we'll limit it such that only 30 of these appear per day. We've also added a variety of new statistics to help you see your learning progress. At the top, you can see a chart of the number of cards you've practiced each day for the past week. We're also now showing your daily goal and streak more prominently. Here, we're also now showing your daily target and your current streak more prominently. The goal is to practice 10 cards a day here, but today I've only practiced nine. If I jump into practicing and review this idea for myself, press show answer, and then give it a review, you can see that I've now hit my one day streak. And when I go back to the main chart, I have a little fire emoji on today here. To customize your daily goal, you can now click today's goal here and quickly drag it with a slider, either down or up, depending on the amount of time that you want to spend practicing. 
We'll also give you some tips here based on what we think your daily goal should be based on your current number of cards. You can see here that we are, have set a learning goal of 64 cards a day, but only if 28 appear in your queue. To add or disable more cards, there's now this helpful chart down here. So for example, I want more cards, and I can see that it's gonna add two cards a day if I re-enable this. So I'll go ahead and do that because I'm deciding I wanna spend more time practicing. I'll re-enable this one as well, the one about my friend's birthdays, and I'll set all of these to active. Now you can see that we are up to 30 cards a day over the coming month. Additionally, we'll now show any documents in your knowledge base that contain flashcards, but which you haven't prioritized yet. This makes it easy to quickly give them a priority here. Finally, let's look at the rest of the stats that we've added. You can view this by clicking on your streak here or clicking the dropdown and jumping right to statistics. First, you can see a chart at the top of all the days on which you've practiced, as well as if you hit your daily target or not. Here, we haven't been practicing so much, so this account has got to start studying. You can also see the number of cards you've added over time for the past few weeks. This hopefully will give you a useful feedback loop to see if you're adding too many cards or too few to meet your learning goals. And then finally, you can see a chart of the number of anticipated upcoming cards based on a simulation of how many you'll get right or wrong in your queue. This should also give you a useful feedback loop to help you know if you're practicing enough and if you need to add more or less cards. So that's the flashcard home a new central place to organize your practicing in RemNote. In testing, both us in the team, as well as all of our alpha and beta testers, have found this to really transform the way that we study by helping us to prioritize what's most important and save time overall. To see a more comprehensive workflow video, check out one of these, or just jump right into practicing. Happy learning!